Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Mustafa Murad. I'm a cinematographer and photographer based in Germany. And today I want to talk with you about a tool that I use to create color accuracy and match different cameras on set if needed. The tool that I use for that is the Spider Checker Video from Datacolor and Final Cut Pro. Let's first talk about why it is important to have accurate colors and match different cameras. When you shoot, for example, a product shot, like a shoe commercial, then you have to get the colors 100% like the manufacturer of the shoe intended to be. Color matching different cameras on the other side is important because every camera has different color signs. That means every camera sensor sees colors different. Speaking of seeing colors different, our eyes sees colors different too. And every display that you look at is showing colors in a different way. So to create correct colors in post-production, you need a tool to rely on that is calibrated with accurate colors so you don't do any guesswork or ruin your shots because you don't have the right tool. And that's why this spider checker video from Datacolor is so important. So let's have a look at the spider checker video and what it's providing to us. The spider checker video has different calibrated charts that you can rely on in post-production. And the first one here is the color pattern chart. With this chart, you can create a special pattern in your vector scope that we're going to see later in this video in Final Cut Pro. And down here we have our skin tone swatches to, to create accurate skin tones. The next chart here is the grayscale card. With this chart you can balance your white patterns correctly. Of course it's better if you have it uh, correct on set, but if not you can balance it out here with this uh, chart and you can also uh, define your brightness values in post-production so you have correct brightness values. Flipping the chart over, we can see that we have two more charts. The first one here is our gray card. With this, we can balance an image out again, the white balance. And the second one is our focus star. With this, you can judge the focus and make sure that the focus is where it needed to be. If you are a hybrid shooter like me and you want correct colors in video and photo, you can combine the spider checker photo and the spider checker video into one checker. To do that, you simply switch the charts over from the photo checker into the video checker, and then you are ready for a hybrid shooting. So how are we gonna use the spider checker video now on set? The best way is to record some frames in tilting and panning the spider checker so you have at least one frame without any shadows or reflections. A great thing about the spider checker video is that the sides are curved and your fingers can grab the spider checker very securely and you don't have any shadows from your fingers onto the uh, swatches. If you have multiple cameras, you have to do the same procedure for every camera. So let's take a look in Final Cut Pro and how we're gonna use the spider checker video in our workflow. So as you can see, I imported the footage where I have a model holding the spider checker video in his hands and I recorded a part of it. And what we have to do is now open our windows and our waveform with the RGB overlay. This RGB overlay doesn't say anything to us now. So let us zoom in into the image a little bit so we can see the cards better. And what we're going to do is we are looking for a draw mask, search for mask and put the draw mask into your footage. So what we're going to do is to isolate the grayscale card like this. I will click on all the corners until I isolated the card. Now we can see a little bit more, but we have to scale in into the image to see the pattern, the X pattern. So basically what we see, we see the red, green and blue channel in this X pattern. And what we have to do is to line up all the colors. So we end up with an X pattern that's pure white, no RGB in it. And then we balance our white balance correct. To do that, we have to go to the color tab and we look for color curves. And when you click on it, you can see that you have on the right side, the red and the green and the blue channel. And when you move one of those uh, control points, like this blue one, you can see on the left side that the whole blue channel is shifting up and down. And basically what we have to do is tweak those channels until we have at the end a pure white X pattern, no RGB in it. I would speed up the footage and show you the end result. So as we can see, if I toggle the curves on and off, we manage that we have a pure white X pattern and let's uh, scale the footage to 100% again. And now we can see if we toggle the curves off and on, you see the background has the orange cast on it. And with our correction, 
the background is gray as it's supposed to be and yeah now our white balance is correct and we can move forward so for the color pattern card we have to go to workspaces again and click on our vector scope in our vector scope we can see the uh, color channels like red magenta blue cyan and we have to balance it out and the way we do that is again with the draw mask put it on our footage and we have to isolate our color pattern card like this again the corners click on all the corners until we have a square and so now the vector scope is much cleaner and if we zoom in a little bit we can see on the left side that uh, some of the color channels are not lined up perfectly and yeah we have to do that now and how we're going to do that we go to the color tab again but this time we go to hue versus saturation tab and if you click on it you can see you have a hue versus hue uh, color tab and we have to click on all the colors final cut uh, creates in addition to our color that we clicked like red two control points here we have to delete those control points every time we select a color like uh, magenta this time again magenta and two control points we have to delete those control points until we have all colors selected i will speed the footage up a little bit so what we can see now is uh, that every color has a square that represents uh, the right uh, angle of the color and we have a skin tone indicator and the goal is now to move these control points until all colors are lining up with the square of the color and let's start with the red channel the red channel is uh, uh, pretty much correct the magenta is a little bit off so we take the magenta control point and we shift it pull it up until we say okay it's lined up and the same we're gonna do for all the color channels color points and you can see the blue one is a little bit off and cyan is also a little bit off and i would push those control uh, points up and down until i'm happy with the results green is a little bit off too and same thing we're gonna push it up until it's lined up with the square and yeah yellow is pretty much lined up so this is the first step the next step is we have to come close to the to those squares uh, that represents the color and to do that we have to go to the hue versus saturation uh, tab and again we have to select all our colors i will speed up the footage a little bit and when we have all our colors selected we can tweak the saturation in pulling up the control points the red channel was already on point i have to pull up the magenta uh, the saturation a little bit more and i will do the same thing for all the colors so that i have the saturation the end of the the pattern into the uh, squares of the of the colors so you can see if i pull it up this is my blue channel and now i can see that the blue is a little bit off the angle is not right so i go to the hue versus hue and i will correct the angle so next color is cyan and as you can see in moving up the hue versus saturation tab we can correct our image the saturation of our image and the last tab is our yellow tab and now the pattern is finished the last thing that we have to do is we have to line up these lines with the skin tone indicator to do that we go to the hue versus hue tab and select our skin tones and you can see we have another control point and then moving up you can see the lines is now almost perfect on the skin tone indicator and that's it now you have correct colors and the right amount of uh, saturation if I toggle the mask off and scale the image down again, we can see now, let's get, let's get rid of the vector scope here. And if I toggle our tweaks on and off, you can see now 
the image is much more saturated and correct saturated. Uh, this is the most important. Now the colors are much more vibrant and the skin color of the model is correct on point as it was on set. And also the jacket, the shirt, all is now correct as it was on set. That's why the spider checker video is so important to reproduce your colors that you had on set. And this will make you and your clients happy. I hope you liked this demonstration of the spider checker video and that you learned something from it. And we see us in the next video. Until then, keep creating.